Do you remember how we used to run back to my house and play pirates? Wendell Bergman, Melchior Gabor, you and I? Shirley. <laughs> Wedding anniversary? Oh, I thought your dad died a few years ago. So he did. His mum's 
way of remembering him. Have you got a pie piece? A <laughs> what? A uh, turn. We all do a turn. A, a turn? Sing song, recite, play the piano. I'm not doing a turn. Are you? I'm a bit embarrassed. My mum will like it. Well, my mum will have to lump it, won't she? She'll be livid. <laughs> she can throw that vase at me for all I care. She probably will. Then I'll jolly will throw it right back at her. That's my girl. Will she? What? <laughs> throw a vase at me? I must admit she don't like not getting her own way. Seems to bring out a femininity. I always wondered why you never asked me ever to meet your mum, now I know. If I brought you back here the first time out, I'd have never seen you again. But I knew once you felt like I did, you'd give as good as you got. I kept thinking perhaps she was a criminal or couldn't keep up the gin. I never dreamt you were keeping me awake. She might start slinging vases at me. I'm sure she won't. Have you been joking then? It depends on what you think's funny now, don't it? I don't think that is. I'm full of nerves as it is meeting your mum for the first time. You can afford it. He hasn't made the long trek down the aisle yet. Must be quite a lot of money in building then. You can't go wrong. Mum buys the land. We have to bung up the houses. With everybody screaming out for property, we're rolling in it. You're marrying into wealth, love. Am I really? Oh, come off. Have I told you often enough? Mm, yeah. But I never believed you before. But you believe I love you? Well, I hope you do, Tom. Because I love you. He doesn't know. Give me no surprise. Well, I thought she'd invited me. I never said that. But this means she's been imposed upon. I don't see why. What? Well, haven't someone seen or known about it? Shirley's right. You should have told Mum. Do you think I have to go? Yes, I do, really. Not leaving. You're not leaving, Shirley. But there's no need for her to stay, Tom. You'll get what you're after anyway. The sparks are going to fly anyway when Terry ups and tells her about himself. Tells her what? It's a family matter, Shirley. But Shirley's one of the family, Henry. We're engaged, don't we, darling? We're picking up the ring tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll go get changed. <laughs> you weren't the first, were you, dear? No. I'm not. Well, I'm going to be the last. There'll be no others after me. You don't mind being you. He can use me any way he likes. Even though he only got engaged to spit in my eye. And I'm more than ready to spit in your other eye, the one that floats off on its own every now and again. I've <laughs> <laughs> got a wonky eye that wanders, haven't you? It's wandering now. <laughs> after what she's put me through. She's got something wrong with her. So she gets her revenge by hunting out other people's weaknesses. I've done nothing I'm ashamed of. I'm not having a dictate to me. Why? What's so special about you then? I just want to ram it out to her that I'm a clay pigeon for to shoot at whenever she gets the mood. And while we're about it, we might as well get some more details sorted out. From now on, I come first from Tom's concern. He answers to me. I've already made up my mind where we're going to live and it's not near here. And I know just the sort of job Tom will soon be doing and it won't be working for you. And I know just how many kids I'm going to have, and I tell you, they won't be seeing nothing of old Granny One Eye. Tom's <laughs> mine, and I'm not having cut an eye. And I'm staying the weekend, because I'm not to be got rid of. So what do you say to that? Nothing, dear, nothing. I've ripped out your tongue, have I? Beautifully. You found someone who can stand up to you, and you don't like it, do you? No. I love it. Do continue. Yes. Well, we're going for a nice walk now. And when I come back, I don't want to hear any more talk about the wedding, because it's been settled. I've settled it. Tom and I are getting married, and if you start off again, I'll smash that monocle over your head. You can always side with Terry over this police business. No, we're on Mum's side over that. Are we? Yeah, just imagine all the extra work for me if Terry goes over to Canada. Hi, Susan. How was the summer?
Stacy. Yeah. I really appreciate you saying that. I'm sure that must have been hard for you to say. And you're not as cold hearted as I thought. Friends? Friends? Oh, Nathan, I have waited my whole life for this moment. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad to hang out sometimes. Police. Charges. <sighs> Lawyer. Money, time, judge, proof. His word against mine. Defendant's attorney, some three-piece button-down summa cum laude fresh from Harvard, fuck off! Did my client rape you? No. Assault you? Yes. How? With a pillow. Did you resist? Yes. Evidence? None. Witnesses? None! Six months for me, that animal goes free. And then if I survive being locked up, then what do I do? Come home and lock myself up. Chain lock, bolt lock, deadlock. And wait for it. To hear him and every creak in the floorboards, every twig tapping in the window, every mouse in the wall. Start from sleep 4 a.m. See something in the dark at the foot of my bed. Eyes, black holes, skin speckled gray like a slug. Hit the lights! He's not there. This time. So then what do I do? Wait for him? Or, or move 3,000 miles? Unlist my number, change my name, get a dog? I don't want to taste my vomit every time the doorbell rings. I don't want to flinch when a man touches me. And I won't wear a goddamn whistle! I want to live my life. It has really changed me, all that time in solitude. It made me realize how ignorant I was. Their deluxe rooms are not as spacious as the brochures make them out to be. Are there any alternate definitions? Why do you keep stalling and spelling that word, huh? It's okay. Punch, principal, punch, they won't let me be 
principal. And we should have that. <laughs> You That's underestimate correct. his caliber, sir. Rodney Stoutheart will return and put an end to your dastardly designs. Come! This is no way for a young bride to address her future husband. But you are not my future husband, sir, nor ever will be. Uh, your father has promised You me. forced me to disobey my father, sir. Throughout my life, I have been a daughter good and true, but now, taking strength from I know not where, and despite my love for him, and despite his fast failing health, I must disobey. If you refuse to marry me, I shall evict you and your ailing father from this property without a penny to your name. How can this be so? Father is a rich man. Your father is a pauper. He has fritted his substance, and his debts have placed him, placed him completely in my power. Poor papa! A pauper! <laughs> oh, what am I to do? What am I to do? Get a prenup. If I do not marry him, we shall be flung from this house. The shock will kill poor father. But I would never be accepted by the stout hearts of St. Albans. But, but if I do marry him, then I shall be condemned. To a life of purgatory with a man I do not love! Oh, if, if only Jack would return with the secret of the mumbly treasure! Oh, but, but I've been wishing for so long. How, how do we make wishes come true? Anyone? Oh, oh, I've got it! When you wish upon a <laughs> oh, what? Oh, I've got another one, Freddy. Clap your hands if you believe in fairies. Clap your hands! Clap your hands! If you believe in fairies! Believe with all your heart! Do you? Is there any other secret? What would it be in that second entire theatre? Right, I've heard, I've heard perhaps sometimes hide in drawers. I don't believe hard enough. Well, one last chance. We did try to keep the show neutral, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Let's see. You. You're pure of heart. <laughs> <laughs> Now you just come along with me down to the kitchen and I'll make you a nice hot drink. Oh, oh 